Alright guys, welcome back. So in today's episode, we are going to start on the sump on this M42 dry sump setup. So I've got the block all uh, set up like we said last time. So we're going to be doing some uh, upgrades on that or some modifications on that uh, sump rather. But we first need to have a look at the sump and the engine, the way it sits in the car. So we can look at the clearances. But first, I want to say a shout out to Blair15 in the comments of the last video. He actually came up with a brilliant proposal and I didn't think about it. Well, a brilliant proposal for to help with funding for these uh, projects and specifically this uh, dry sump conversion. So what we're going to do is I'm going to basically, I'm going to give you guys the link to my PayPal account and I'm going to put it in the description below and uh, we're gonna kind of run a uh, fundraising exercise and everybody that submits uh, sort of money towards this project will get their name put up on the inside of the bonnet and um, you too can be a part of this uh, dry sump conversion which I think is a really cool idea and it, uh, it allows you guys the viewers um, to be a part of this build and First off, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody that supported this car and this build um, in its current and pre-existing configuration. But also, Blair, thank you for coming up with that idea. I have run previously run fundraisers, but uh, they haven't been very successful. So I think this one is a good idea. So what we'll do, everybody's name will kind of go up onto the bonnet over there. So that's enough with the chit chat, let's get into the episode. So what we need to do is I need to figure out, um, we need to look at two things here. We need to look at the angle of the sump and the engine, and we also need to look at the clearance. So what do I mean by that? So I'm looking at the clearance here in between the subframe and the sump. So the sump doesn't cross all the way across to the front at the same level. It obviously steps up to go over the subframe so that means that we can't really run the channel all the way across like uh, i originally planned um, because of the subframe so we're probably gonna have to run the channel uh, from about here to here uh, and then um, let it sort of gravity feed down from here so that's kind of what i need to uh, measure up and then sketch up and then we'll see how that is going to apply to our engine on the stand um, so that we can uh, kind of start marking it up and see where we are going to draw the lines and where we're going to cut and how that's actually going to look all right so i've had more of a detailed look at pretty much how we interface here with the uh, subframe and how it all curves round and all of that and I have marked up the sump so you can see the blue lines that's pretty much where I have marked it up now if you look at the sump from this angle you will see that the subframe is pretty much pretty much clears over here right here so what we're going to do is we're going to use this line as our reference and we're just going to take the sump straight forward so we're going to retain some of the material in the sump uh let me switch let me swap it over and kind of show you. Now it's hard to kind of make out what uh, we're doing here, but uh, essentially, like I said, so this is your horizontal, this piece. Now we're gonna keep a lot of this here, kind of this section here with the sump because this uh, is already here and this is kind of our reference. So we don't have to plate that up, but all of this where I've marked it, this is where we're gonna cut the rest of the sump off and it'll come across through there and I'll cut all the way down here and around here the reason I'm kind of keeping this is so that um, we also have some structure here and I don't want to really mess around with these webs so we still keep this integrity we keep this integrity um, so the plate that we're going to bend up can kind of come and fix straight onto here and then well the welding guy will have to try and make it happen through there so he can also modify it 
um, if needs be. I also didn't want to go down too low here and cut into here. Again, the welding guy can make that decision. I'm just kind of giving him uh, more meat to play with. And then we can go lower down here, but I don't want to interfere with these mounting points in two because obviously they tie into the, the back of the block. And over here, we're just going to, I'm get, again, giving him more meat to play with. Uh, he can always trim it down where he needs to. So, um, yeah, there's nothing left to do but to start cutting. And then once I've cut, I've cut it, I'll clean it up quite a bit. Um, before it goes to the fabricator, I'll blast it so that it's nice and uh, prepped. Alright, so my phone ran out of storage while we were busy with that, but the good news is I managed to fetch, fi I managed to finish the sump and uh, so this is what it looks like. So there's no more bottom section, no more tank reservoir, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, yep, that's how it's going to look in the car, super shallow. Now what I am going to do is basically add a collection tank over here and now I have to just check the gap that we have between the sump and the subframe um, but effectively the collection tank is going to go over there and kind of run down here and then the scavenge pipes for the um, for the dry sump and our dry sump is going to sit up here and it's going to have the two suction lines and those lines will go down to a fitting here and a fitting here and this will have like a channel in it and so we're just going to fill up this section here and uh, close it off with plate up to the channel and uh, that channel will f effectively catch the oil and then um, provide basically a scavenge section that uh, the pump can suck up and then pump to the tank. So I need to see how much space we actually have here. Let's check that out. About 20 mils. Looks like we have more. The camera can get okay. So yeah, you gotta be really careful. It's hard to see, but over here, we actually don't have much space. It's super cramped in there, so yeah, it's going to be really tricky. We're going to get some cardboard aided design here, so now I've checked a few things. So at the point of the subframe, maximum height is about 20 millimeters. So I'm going to give this a bend and bend this all up and then I'm going to show you guys more or less what we're going to look like. Alright, so now that I have created a giant mess everywhere. I have uh, pretty much assembled my CAD model and uh, it's kind of a, an idea of what we're going to go for. So let me show you. Pretty much at Point. this is the point at which the uh, subframe uh, kind of ends in the car and it goes from here forward and you can see that you can see that on the chassis here so there there's that rib and uh, yeah it's kind of in line there the top the top section so that folded section right and so your maximum height from there, uh, the kind of the gap that you have is about 20 millimeters. So that's what I've allowed. And then from here, we're just going to raise it up and then create a box um, to, to basically house the fittings. 
so that's more or less what we kind of after this whole box setup now over here I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen there but uh, that's pretty much how it's going to look in the car and obviously this will be closed and it'll all be closed up now this wall is going to be this wall extended pretty much so this gap will be closed and uh, yeah this this wall is going to sit over here right on this wall and this wall will you know we'll we'll figure something out over there all right so so that's pretty much what it's going to be this width might be slightly wider um, but effectively the pump is going to sit on the right hand side of the engine and so uh, that's this side so the pump will sit here and then effectively the pipes the scavenge pipes will come through and there will be one over here and one down there something like that the two scavenge lines and then each line will have an a in fitting um welded onto the sump with a uh, thread and a filter on the inside um with, with like a strainer and then that'll have an a in fitting and dash 10 lines that come to the oil pump parked over here and then the lines will kind of come so one will go there and one will go there and then those two feed into your supply line uh, which sorry your supply line which goes back to the tank the pump will then also have a suction section coming from the tank so that's what we are going to be looking at so now what i need to do is i need to discuss it with my fabricator and i can leave it to him to have this fabricated this box or i can bend it up but i think i might leave it to him because he might want to change you know this a bit um, because we don't want you know he might want to do it differently and that means this box might change so um yeah that is pretty much how it's gonna be and what we are going to be looking at also if you want to contribute to this dry sump build please check out the link below it is the link to my paypal account everybody who contributes will get a spot on the bonnet and your name will stay there as long as this uh, engine and dry sump configuration is in this car so if you want to contribute please click the link to the paypal account and uh, don't be shy thank you so much and so that means that's going to be a wrap for this episode i'm uh, i haven't really done much more um, because i'm trying to finish out a couple of projects uh, like I showed you that E36, we've actually got it started now. chuffed about that so i need to get that finished so it can go to the dyno um the golf we're doing a bunch of coating there so i need to get that finished but in the next episode um we're gonna pretty much prep all this stuff uh there are a few mods i need to do on the oil pump housing the original housing and hopefully by that time i'll have the um uh the oil pump and uh, then i can send this with the oil pump and the front cover and a couple of things that we need modified to the fabricator um, so that uh, so that he can do it all at once so um, yeah it's quite a bit of upfront planning but I'll show you guys what we're going to do there so in the next episode we'll probably take the engine out um, I, need to take, I need to take the whole front cover off anyway because of the the mods on the original oil pump um, and yeah there's quite a few things so engine needs to come out um, um yeah <laughs> so anyway that's where we are so anyway thank you for watching and this is the first step it's a big step 
Um, this is probably the biggest modification you do um, other than the oil tank. If you're fabricating one, then that's a massive undertaking and you need someone who really knows the design. Um, I've purchased one, a very high-end one. I managed to get it used, uh, so that's encouraging. Uh, that means that that uh, design is already done. Um, so, yeah, I'm just waiting for that stuff to come through. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.